Hello and welcome to the channel. So I just want to do a, a video on a few things that I've bought and uh, something that was actually given as well. So this is a oscilloscope and a voltmeter. It's quite a few things all rolled into one. And I saw this on uh, Shango's channel. He, he'd been sent one of these for free. So I've had to pay for mine. <laughs> and this cost me about 98 quid. And I was quite impressed. He was quite impressed with it. And uh, if it's good enough for him to use, it's certainly good enough for me to use. So I thought we'd just take take a look at this really and, and just um, have a bit of a, a mild play around with it. Finisri, I think is how that's pronounced on there. F-N-I-R-S-I. -I. Finisri. I think. But anyway, and it's actually there again. And it's model 2C53P. So flat panel oscilloscope. So, um, so let's just I'll take these out first and we can have a look. So if we just just have a have a look at this. We've got uh, we've got an on off switch there. It charges up via USB, so it's, it's obviously got its own batteries installed. It's got a little reset on there. I'll have to read the destructions. And then on here we've got uh, ohms common, which is obviously because it's a multimeter, milliamps and 10 amps, the usual deal that you get on a multimeter. So we've got a couple of sockets here, it's two channel this, so it's twin channel, channel one and channel two. And then we've got uh, DDS there, and that is for this cable here. We'll switch it on and we'll have a bit of a play. There we go, and it, it boots up. And he, you know, Shango actually used this when he was, I think he was working on a television and it was great, you know. It, uh, so let's, uh, we might not be to test the oscilloscope part today because I've got nothing actually on the bench to test it on but we can have a look at the meter certainly so that goes in there that goes in there now it has a menu you just slide it that's the oscilloscope you go into the menu you can just slide in what you want and tap on it there. So it's pretty easy to use that, that menu. A little bit of delay when you... So I don't know whether you can... So some have got functions to speed that up. So we've got auto on there. My word, that is a bit slow. So let's see, let's see how it fares measuring a few resistors then. So I've got here, what is that? 91 ohms. Let's see how it goes. Well, seems to be uh, on the money with that one and that was reasonably quick. Let's pitch it off against another meter. So we put this, this meter here. This is one of the meters that I use occasionally. So let's see what this one measures this resistor at. It says 90.3, 90.2, 90 90.3. And on here it's 91.8. Nine, so there's a there's about an ohm difference in that, mm. which one's right? Well, I've got another meter above here. This is the one we use. So you can't actually see it, but I 
can't bring this one down because it's wiring up on on the shelf there. Let's try this resistor on this one. Ninety point two. So that is. Uh, Idiot. Ninety point one. So maybe it's a little bit out, or these two meters are a little bit out. Anyway, maybe it needs calibrating. We'll have to check. So ninety point ninety one point one five. So it's a, it's about an ohm out. Just a shade more than an ohm. 90.2, 91.7, 91 91.6. 91 so yeah, just a little bit more than an ohm. Let's try something a bit bigger. 560 ohms. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, sorry, is that, yeah, 560? Oh, no, it's 680, sorry, 680. And that's uh, measure 676. Let's see what it measures on this meter. I don't think we need to use the other one again. We know these two, are, that one and above, and this one are pretty calibrated. Oh, we need to go up a bit, don't we? Six hundred and seventy. So again, a little bit out. Six hundred and seventy-five. That's showing. Mm. So that's a little bit out. So I wonder if we need if that needs calibrating. Maybe I don't know. So I need to keep an eye on that. So let's go back into the menu. See what else we've got. That's the oscilloscope, signal source. That's settings. Go into settings and see what we've got. Or oh, English, so we've already set it to that. We've got brightness for the screen on there. Sound. And that brings up the volume if you're a bit deaf like me. Oh, we can even have a theme look. Can we? Oh, yes, we could have the blue theme. But I think I prefer the yellow. Let's have a, let's have a look at the blue theme. See what that looks like. There we go, it doesn't seem to look much different, does it? Settings, yellow. Oh. Oh, you can choose start up on boot, so you can decide, you can choose which, when it boots up, which you want to start, start it up on. So that, obviously, um, is the multimeter on there. Ease that brightness down a bit. Battery will last a bit longer. Let's go back into menu. So let's switch it off now. See what happens when we switch it back on. And there we go. So we've got the meter there where we when we switch it on. Not sure what that is there. We'll have to. Read the destructions. We've also got that. Oh yes, that gear that tells us. So this, so it measures capacitance as well. That's interesting. So yeah, well, I best find a capacitor then that we can use. Let's try one of these uh, Vichy. 47 a microfarad at 450 volts. Let's see if it this works with it. Took a while to show, and that's measuring at 54. 54.15. This meter above again has 
as capacitors on it. But let's see what that measures it at. It's a bit slow this one. 54.93 54 point let's just so 54.97 so let's just try this again that 54.2 so that's pretty close it's actually quicker than the than the meter that we've got up, up top there see what else we've got let's see if it measures something in the peak farad range so this is a 500 peak farad Vichet capacitor. Let's see how it fares with this one. Although it does say nanofarads there, so yeah, pick that up really quickly. So again, if if, if I put that on the other meter and it, and it won't, the other meter above there won't measure uh, peak farad caps very well. Once they get into this real, yeah. 0.421 peak farad probably pretty close for that so I've got a 10 nanofarad capacitor here so we'll give let's um, let's give that a try very quick very good 9.974 so that the, that appears to be pretty accurate and this we've got this parameters thing going on here see there so any any variation in that you can see it measures it and apparently you can save these parameter uh, readouts you can save up to five at once apparently I've just had a bit of a leg at the instructions right I've got a battery here so we're on we've, we're on volts now I've got a battery here so we'll have a quick quick leg at this now this is a, a 1.5 volt battery so One point six volts. Right, let's try it on this meter. Where was it again? Yeah, one point six one seven. One point six one eight. I'd say that's pretty uh, accurate. So that seems to work okay as well and you can see on the again on this parameter thing going on there so I think you can pause that with this run setting and you can see now it's going through you can switch that off I'm not very good at reviewing stuff like this but I'll give it a try now we could do it clearing all of this off and don't really know how we do that so I don't know if is that the reset button there maybe so what do you do do you just reset that with the probe like this gently there we go ah there we go probably just didn't hold the button in for long enough and there we go and you can see it's it's cleared everything off there now so that that's obviously how you just reset it then i would imagine there we go you can see that is a little bit out not not massively though 0.25 of an ohm 0.26 whatever and that's probably the probably the resistance of the cables it's measuring there so we'll see if there's a just a way to calibrate that properly but it is close we'll read the destructions so there we go so that's an interesting item so let's go back to menu so let's go now I've got signal source and now I've got a little amplifier above me in actual fact it's that Bush desktop amplifier we did a video for I'll leave a link in the description so in there it does indeed so I've got that plugged in to a, uh, a lead plugged into it
here. So let's just see if uh, if it work. If we can get this working, then. Hmm. Ah, there we go. If in doubt, hit the run button. So that's pretty good. Let's have a play with this then. So let's see how that works. Do we have to put it in on here? Oh, there's a different waves on there. So that's a square wave, half wave, sawtooth wave, sine wave. And this amplitude here is the volume. So I can bring that in a bit closer so you can see. So we've got the volume there going in. Not sure duty cycle 50% if we can change that or not let's go into frequency again let's put 500 in ok there we go oops all right, one of the cables just clipped, the crocodiles has come off. There we go. Um, well, that's that's a very useful thing for me I, I, in the workshop on the you know on the other benches where I've not got the scope. Pink running in in a minute, meowing. Pretty good. That getting to the point where I I can still hear it, but I think I can just about hear that, feel it more than hear it. Let's go for the big one. Yeah, and I can't hear that. There we go. That's great. That works really well. Quite impressed with that. I'll switch it off. So that's good. You can see the bas battery must last a good while because it's not even moved on there. Oh, you can start it there as well. That's good. Pause. On that, yeah, pause it. Run works the same. So you can, you've got a choice of using it up there or down here. Impressive thing. Right, so I've, uh, right, so I've got this oscilloscope working now and I've just got it clipped onto the uh, signal generator you can see it there it goes off the way on the wave generator so that's pretty good could we get into the menu of that though from here I don't think we can so we'd have to go into signal source so let's try the square wave like play school I'll try the square window and we'll go back to the oscilloscope 
click auto waiting auto measurement Oh, of course, that switched off. There we go. So that's into channel two. There we go. <laughs> How I press there. So that's now that square. You see, it's not quite squared off there on the top. So probably just needs the. Uh, where's that screw today for? It came with these probably just needs that adjusting that probe to get that right you see that's just come off now so channel 2 cha yeah we're in channel 2 It's a bit tight, that is. That looking straighter. Let's go the other way again. Don't seem to be doing anything. Hmm. We'll have to, although it does seem straight, not at the bottom though, does it? We're looking at the top of the wave. Ah, oh, there we go. Just in that. Don't know. So I have to have a look at that. But anyway, that all seems to be working pretty well. Would be nice if you could get we've got measure here so what we got on here frequency and they you can switch all these on volts peak to peak that would be the one we need right That's it. Tap the screen to get those off, and you probably can't read those on the camera. But we've got frequency there. We've got volts peak to peak, which at the moment is not that that good because with the sound. Let's just go back into menu and go back into signal source. Let's go for sine wave. Back into menu, oscilloscope. Has that not changed? New. Boy, there we go. So we're not getting anything peak to peak. Maybe there's just not enough going through it off that. So it looks like if you if you want to adjust anything on any of the other set, you know, the, such as the sign, you know, the wave generator. You've got to go into menu, select it, and then come back. It would be nice if you could sort of work that from here while you was on uh, while you was on this screen setting, so to speak. But never mind. Yep. So that's how you bring in measure with the funcation button. That's a, a new one.
coarse and fine that's just be voltage so whatever you're selecting um, coarse means you just got one volt two volt three volt fine where you would go up in increments calibration requires removing all probes so let's remove all probes let's give it a calibration does that mean that one as well well it says calibration successful so it probably doesn't they're, they're not really please remove all probes let's, uh, let's try that again very good right so now we've calibrated it let's let's plug in the uh, that as well click that on that's uh, that's a bit of a look at that we're not going to go too mad with it but if we go back into into menu again so so if we look what we've got that's just settings and that just goes around in a circle Ooh, and that's the settings there so we've got multimeter oscilloscope wave gen or signal source so that's what we've got there a very useful tool that so we've got a, a package here which was kindly sent to us by a, a viewer martin same name as me but spelt differently martin with an i pink's moving the camera around she's come to inspect the package you see there seems only interested in food at the minute Right, best open this package up. Uh, you're in the way, Pink. So, no sniff test from Pink, so she's obviously not moderately interested in it. Right. What have we got in this package then? Let's see, it's got the gaffer tape or duct tape, which is customary for all musicians. you that's not what's in the box let's have a look and now pink is interested she's giving it the sniff test let's see what we've got have a turret board already wired mm. interesting So Martin bought this off eBay and then never used it for whatever reasons and uh, he's donated it to the channel. Um, he did send me a link to the eBay uh, link from where he bought it from and it was sold by a gentleman called the Flying Haggis. <laughs> so I think if we build an amplifier out of this we'll call it the Flying Haggis Amplifier. So this turret board layout from what I can make out is a high octane single ended amp and this can be found on the AX84 website and I've got the schematic for it which, which I think is the schematic for this amp anyway. So I'm going to try and look through this schematic and see if this turret board matches up. 
but I'm pretty sure it does. Now if we look on the bottom you can see that it's all been taped under there. So it looks nice and tidy. There's a few components that I'm, I may change on here. That is the grid stopper for the output tube there. I'm almost certain and that is only, well, I don't know that's a quarter watt. So we should be changing that to a one watt. Now this high octane amp has a cathode follower in it and I'm going to have a look at this schematic now and then we're going to see if it matches up to this this here doofra. So you can see I've got the schematic up there now and we need something to do some pointing with. So if we have a look you can see we've got an input there we've got first stage coming in and then we're going through that 22 nanofarad cap coming down here into this one meg volume going across that resistor there which is like an attenuator resistor methinks we've got a 470 picofarad over the bypass in it to pass the highs and then we're going into this next stage here and we've got another 22 nanofarad we're coming down here to another volume and then we're going into this cathode follower here and you can see we go into the grid straight out of the plate into the next grid and then we come out of the cathode into a tone stack and then into the output tube and there's that 5.6k resistor there the question is, what are we actually going to do with this board if it turns out to be this amp? We'll have a look at that a bit later. But first of all, let's see if this schematic is close to this, this turret board. So let's just let's look at the power supply to start off with. So if we scroll up, we can see, see the, the power supply there. So we've got a 50 microfarad cap here we've got 47s and then we've got another 50 microfarad here and then we've got r20 which is 100 ohms at one watt so if we look at this board now and i'll stick this in front say move messing about moving the camera if we look we've got our two caps there and there's the there's our 100 ohm resistor got the diodes there but by the by in any amp of this would have diodes so we're not worried about those now here we've got a 220k resistor going to the ground bus if we look on here we've got a 100k resistor going to the ground bus so that looks like a, a bleed resistor to me to uh, for safety to bleed off the B plus when the amp switched off the HT. We've got a rectifier tube, but the, obviously on this board, as I pointed out, solid state. So that that's obviously not. It, we're looking at the actual, you know, the signal circuit, not so much whether the power circuit's the same. Whether we've got an EZ80 there or we've got those diodes is not relevant. That's just a choice thing. So that, that power supply looks the same, except someone swapped the 100k for a 220k on here. So let's go back to the input stage. So we've got a 68k resistor coming in here and a 1 meg grid leak. Now I'm betting that that 1 meg grid leak will be on the jack socket, as they usually are. And I also think that that 68K will be on the jack socket. So that would be going straight to the grid of the tube. This then is the plate, which is 100K resistor there and a 22 nanofarad. So if we look back at our board again there, you can see we've got two plate resistors going on there and that'll be for two stages. These are the coupling caps 
and you can see the second stage has got exactly the same on here so that that all tallies up so now let's look at the cathode resistor on here so we've got on the first stage cathode resistor we've got a 2.7k there and we've got a, a 0.68 going on so if we look and there's a very putrid looking resistor there another one of those quarter watt things by the look of it 2.7k now i can't see what the bypass cap is on there because i need some really big glasses to see that that's a tiny cap i would have thought that's a 0.68 though but it might be but but again it's a choice thing we're just looking at you know how close this this is sorry i'm dropping that so we're just really looking you know how close this is just as a, a basic circuit is it the same uh, there might be a few components that are different that's what i'm trying to say so that that all tallies up there right so on this one is that brown or is that red you know yeah that's 220k so we've got a two 220k resistor there and then we've got that's oh, that i think is a 100 picofarad it is i'm sure it is but we can change all these can't we 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 just need to know that this board, whole board layout matches roughly with that now we've got a 220k resistor there is that going on the ground bus yes so that's the grid leak resistor but it's a different value there you can see we've got two uh, 220k there you can see that's going to ground so that's a grid leak resistor there so that that matches up not that the components different but the the basic circuit matches so let's go on into the grid of the next stage or oh, we'll look at the cathode before we go further so this cathode has a 1.2k and a 1 microfarad uh, bypass in there just sorry yeah so we've got 1.2k and that is let's have a look what that is shall we is one microfarad that's right so that is that matches there so that's good we've got an uh, another capacitor well that's there this is there 50 mile we've got 47 that is 820 ohms so that's the third stage then yeah 820 right we've got that then we've gone through the plate resistor through that coupling cap and the plate resistor 100k well that looks like the plate resistor there and then we've got this um I wonder what that is so look can't see that that's got no writing on it so we don't know what that is there so that looks like the plate resistor and that looks like the coupling cap the couple of 220ks so we've gone through here 1.2 microfarad got another one meg pot uh, 470k so that'll be one of so that 220k we've got 220k and 220k for those that's those two there on that you can see on there those two and then we go into this cathode follower yeah into this cathode follower we go up through there and then we come out to the tone stack and that must be this these, these items here so that must be the that that will is that the slope resistor there what's that is that 15k slope resistor have we got that in the tone stack we've got 33k in here that must be the 470 pico there but I'm guessing that is that and then we've got the 22 there which is correct and then the other one is 103j so that's 10 nanofarad instead of the 22 there that's the 10 nanofarad there so working his way through then we've got obviously we've got another capacitor there on the power supply that rings true now that will be the bypass capacitor uh, cathode resistor and cathode bypass capacitor there so let's have a look at the output tube and see what we've got on the cathode 130 ohms and 100 microfarad we have 130 ohms 
in there and the bypass cap is 100 microfarad so that matches up so that's good those those there that matches up there you can see and then there's our grid leak resist uh, sorry grid leak there's our grid stopper going into the the tube there so we've got that and then we've got a couple of 1k resistors here um, they are where are they I don't there R6 so that so those there are for a triode switch which is here there's one of them I don't see the other one but it's probably hiding somewhere on that schematic where we can't see and there's the other one at the top there you can see so those two resistors there are for the triode and then we've got we, we know we've got our 100 ohm and we know that resistor we've already looked at on the power supply so that schematic is exact for this board but it looks like someone's done some mods on this board it's obviously been used at some time um, and some or somebody's been intending on using it and obviously before martin had it but they've changed a few components such as we've got 10 nanofarad here instead of 22 and so on and the the 470 k's have been down to 220 they would have an enormous amount of gain on the swapping those very martial-esque that actually so that that's quite an interesting thing so what are we going to do with it well we're going to build an amplifier with it the question is though what are we going to you know what we're going to build this into so i i've had a bit of a rummage round so thinking about what we need we, we actually need a chassis to, to put this into to start with but we also need some components so i found this transformer and i've got about four or five of these so this is a danbury electronics transformer and we will have to do something with the by isolating all these terminals on this but this is 100 milliamps at 240 volts that's on the secondary and the filaments are 12.6 at 1.5 amps now that might seem a problem at first we're not this amp's only going to be a single ended amp we, we don't want it to be massively loud or anything it's just you know it's just going to be a, a home use amp or recording amp that's basically what what we're aiming for with that so we need some some tubes that are going to match up to these voltages so i had a bit of a rummage in my tube collection because i thought being as we've got this transformer we'll use it choose some valves that we think we can work with this so i came up with for an output tube this is 30p12 which is pl801 this is a tv tube and this tube runs at 12 volts 12 13 volts 12.6 13 volts something along those lines so that tube would be ideal for this amp that that's the mazda number 30p12 so this is just a pentode and the, in actual fact this has the same pin at as a 6bq5 el84 but obviously it's only six watt dissipation and the filaments are a different voltage so obviously you just you couldn't just plug this in into an amp that uses 6bq fires but the pin out is the same the filament voltages are different and the dissipation of the tube is half but that could be ideal for this project because although this tube doesn't have a massive amount of output the um there's a lot of gain going through those stages there so we should get some good volume out of this now i expect we'll probably get i don't know maybe three watts out of it max if we're lucky but we can test that on the scope so this tube appears to be brand new it, it's come out of my tube stash you can have a, a bit of a look there it's come out of my tube stash but i thought we'd test this tube 
so I looked up the settings because it's not actually in the, the two book but obviously we can use the 6BQ5 settings because the pin out's the same and although the filaments are double we can test it on the normal filament voltage as well or the next one up which will be 13 volts so 5E so we get the meet this tester in so 5E1 E is 6.3 volts F is 13 volts so we can test that tube on there and then just use the same rest of the settings same for the 6BQ5 so let's switch on and hone in so we'll go 5F1 we've got our tube in so we'll look at the the meter I'll just hold the uh, uh, one six and eight five e one one six and eight and test is three and there we go look at that that 96 percent that's pegging out there on the meter so he's a lumberjack and he's okay so we'll be using him for the output tube now the preamp tubes obviously we could we could use 12x7s we could just use a pair of 12x7s if we wished or we could use 6n2p which is which has the same gain factor as as a 12x7 but is 6.3 volts but because there's two of them we could wire them in series that also means that if this amp has way too much gain we can we can pull the old ECC 85 trick like we did on the record player amp and we can put these in much same as with the THD amp where we put less gain tubes in it lesser gain tubes this has a move of 57 it's exactly the same pin out as the 6N2P so this is almost half the gain so that gives us some some options as well with this amp which means looking at that circuit this amp's going to have a lot of gain if you think that a fender champ only has you know one preamp tube th this amp's got two preamp tubes and you know a cathode follower should give us quite a bit of gain but if we've got too much gain we can always tame it with these two with these ecc 85s i'm sure i've got another one of those and he's he's come out of the stash as well so we should test him and he will test on 5e1 and then it, the, the rest of the test will be same as a 12ax7 so it's three on this meter for one side and eight on the other so let's just move him at three first and we'll have a look at him And up he goes, and he's looking good. He's looking very good. Yep. So we look at eight, and that again it is up to that's a, be, a beautiful two. So we only need to find another one of those, and we made. So there we go. So we've got as output transformer, and we've got as output tube, and we've got a choice of preamp tubes there. What about a chassis for this amp? So here we have a Blackstar HD5 chassis. Now, if some of you remember on the, the channel last year, I think it was early last year, we had this this Blackstar HD5 in, and it was written off. Let's just try and move the camera back a bit so you can see it. And the reason it was written off is because this amp fell foul of Billy Bodger. And what had actually happened, the, the like FETs or whatever they have for the preamp stage or the voltage regulators for the phase inverter, because these amps push pull, although they're five watts, and they, they get hot and burn out, and it had burned some holes in the board. If 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 any of you have watched it, remember. If not, it's still on the channel. You can if you look it up. And of course, instead of writing the board off. That whoever had done it before tried to bodge it all up and it, it just and it cost they were dry joints and it was just a mess basically and it were never going to work instead of just writing the amp off 
you know or trying to get another board for it it just widened the holes out where it had burnt through and then put wires through and it was it was the the the, the components were just flopping about and everything so we just we obviously we had to write it off and the guy just he didn't want the amp back so it's it sat in the workshop so i thought we'd use this it's a 1b12 combo or is it a 1b10 combo sorry it's not the head it's the combo so i thought this would be ideal you do have to watch it with these black star chassis though because they, they don't file the edges down on these and they're like razor blades and you just go over it with a file before you work on it on the edges just so you know when you're working on it and handling it you don't you get cut so will our will our board fit into this even so let's have a look if it does so i thought that board could go somewhere there we'll have to remove these stanchions and put the zone in so that seems to fit okay We need to drill a hole for for the for another tube though, because remember we've got that the, we can stick the output tube in that hole there. We can stick the preamp tube there, and then we need to just drill a hole for the cathode follower. We could probably put it there, maybe we just see it where it runs on this board. There seems plenty of room in here, and then we just get some pots, uh, power supply thing to go in there usual deal socket for the speakers we don't need much we need uh, by the look of it on there we've got middle bass and treble on the schematic so and a couple of volumes by the look of it so we've got plenty of hoils for those and we'll just we'll just blank the rest off with rubber grommets so i think that's going to be an, an excellent project but of course there's one thing we're still missing and that is an output transformer transformers to use for the output transformers to use on this project is the Hammond ones which are the universal ones that have uh, the various taps and those taps allow you to match up the effective load resistance now if we look at this transformer here it says 240 volts AC there's no center tap on this transformer so we can calculate from that what the plate voltage is and if we times it by 1.44 it comes out at 339 volts so we're going to have somewhere around 340 volts the amp is going to draw that down now we might have too much uh, voltage for this 30p12 tube so we may have to regulate that voltage or reduce it and we could, I've got some diodes that I use for doing that some chassis mounted diodes to, to, to reduce it now I am I probably will end up running that 30p12 here I probably will end up running that uh, over voltage on the plate not on the screen but on the plate the thing is the, these tubes you know they, they're used for nothing else yeah it's a really nice tube I'm sure I've got plenty more and the they're easily obtainable the cheap so if we like when i did the television amp you know they they were rated for 250 volts on the plate and i think i'm running that at 310 volts and i've been gigging that amp now for for over a year since it's only a prototype since i built it you know it's not i am i do plan to build a, a really a proper one with a proper turret board and I think we've got we're coming up to about 300 hours on that now on those tubes and they're absolutely fine so basically it, it, I'm, it's a prototype and I'm, I'm seeing you know what we can push the, those tubes they're PL84s in there so if you look at an, an EL84 the, the, the plate but the maximum plate voltage on the data sheet is 300 volts but of course as we know people have pushed them far higher than that up to 400 volts so at some point somebody must have said let's see how far we can push these tubes past the data sheet and basically that's what i'm doing so i've worked it out if they only last a thousand hours you get three years out of those gigging and if you're earning money with them and they stand me at about a pound a piece and there's loads of them you know because obviously they're for televisions nobody uses them and the the mullards they're really good quality tubes so 
much the same with this so we're going to see you know how far we can push this tube if it blows it then we'll have to reduce the voltage and we'll get another one it's, it's not like you know it's not like the kt80h in the thd which are like 80 pounds <laughs> you know uh, not that you'd ever blow one of those but you know what i'm saying it's not an expensive thing so so let's get back to the output transformer now so let's have a look at a transformer incidentally that's the ax84 website there i'm sure most of you've been on this before you some of you guys probably know a lot more than i do about you know some of these projects online and things and there's quite a lot of information on here there's, there's the materials you can use for it somebody's done one with an el34 there by the looks of it and getting about 10 watts out of it it's probably about right depending on what what plate voltage he's putting into that there's other guys done some work on one there there's images of ones that people have built on there as well so this looks a very good website and i plan to do a bit of exploring on this when i get a minute 125 se i think is the chat for us and there he is you can see that there now we've got We've got a 3 watt one, a 5 watt and an 8 watt. You can see how they get bigger and bigger as they go on and they go right up to 25 watts, 100 milliamps there. We're going to be somewhere around about 3 watts but I might go for the 5 watt one and that might just give us a bit more headroom. We could probably even go for the 8 but I think the 5 will be enough. So let's have a look at him. Ew. So we've got a data sheet, let's have a look. So we just widen that out a bit for the camera. There we go. You see that. So we've so if we look at this, it's designed for general purpose replacement, not hi-fi. It's a single-ended tube output circuit. It's the reason it's not hi-fi, it won't have an ultra-linear tap for the screen, I'm guessing. Frequency response 100 hertz. To 15 kilohertz so not too bad there 100 hertz that's okay for a single ended amp just for this one for full frequency response 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz for push pull output use c125 series so if we hone down you can see there's all the measurements but if we hone down to this part here we've got the hookup data for this transformer we've got all the gump and stuff there as well on this i'm sure some of you have used these before i dare say you have but for those that haven't if you, if you have then you can just scroll on through the video so here's the primary brown and blue and then we've got we've got a choice of so black is no is zero ohms down at the bottom and then we've got white so if we use black and white wire uh, we can have 32 ohms but we, we wouldn't you'd either have 16 or 8 so at 16 you you've got a 5k primary going on there and at 8 ohms you've got a 2 2 and a half k primary so that makes sense cuz 8 ohms would give you half of that and then you can have a choice of black and yellow wire which gives you six eight or four there and there's the primaries that you get like a choice of primaries there or you can use the black and the green and you can get again a choice of primaries or you can use black and orange a 45 milliamps is maximum on the bias but we won't be exceeding that very doubtful well i know we won't we should i'm expecting that tube will bias somewhere around 26 milliamps and possibly even less than that so we've got to get our effective load resistance from that tube matched up and to do that we need to use the plate voltage that we we have on the tube when it's running and then we square it and divide it by the uh wattage the dissipation of the tube that we've got 
and that should give us our effective load resistance. So it's just a matter of balancing that up and that's why they give you these various various choices. So let's let's bring up the calculator here. So the the tube data sheet gives a maximum plate voltage of 250 volts. So if we square that we get 62,500. If we divide that by 6, which is the dissipation of our tube, we get a primary of 10k there. So we're looking for a 10k primary at that kind of voltage. Now we may have a little more voltage than that and probably will. So but let's just work off those figures to start with. We may, we may have to find another transformer if, if we get too high on the voltage. So, we could have a 32 ohm speaker if we use the black and the white wire. We could have a, a 16 ohm speaker if we use the yellow. I can't remember what the speaker is in that now, and we may change it anyway because it's one of those cheapy Chinese Black Star speakers. And then, if we use uh, black and green, we can have a 10k primary of, with an 8 ohms load. And if we use black and orange, we could have a 4 ohm speaker. So my favourite would probably be the 8 ohms, but it depends what, what we what speaker we can find. So basically that's how that works, how that, that works on there with the transformer. Now we might have more voltage than that. We may be pushing this tube quite a bit. So let's say we pushed it to 275. And we times that. Oh, we already have done four. 275 and we divide that by 6 now we've got a 12k primary going on there so we've got to be a bit careful there what what we're doing because we I mean a lot of people now don't bother matching up the effective load resistance to the primary of the transformer but to me if it's on the data sheets really it, it's on for a reason so looking at that now if we add 300 volts on that tube, so we'll be, we'll be giving it a bit of thrapes with that. We've now got 90,000 divided by 6. So now we've got a 15k primary going on there. So we've got to be careful where we, where we place this voltage on that tube and, and you know how much. And we know we're going to get 340 volts out of that cold. Without, that means without any current on there. And then it just depends how much the tubes draw it down and, and how much we can regulate that voltage or reduce it. So that's basically what's going on there. Now what we could do is let's just say we had 275 volts. And this is all, you know, because obviously the, this is just hearsay figures if you like. If we over dissipated the tube by a watt divided it by seven there and then we're back to 10k primary we just we're a bit over there at 10.8 aren't we a little bit over but so the this ballot is is trying to balance this effective load resistance and sometimes you don't always you know you can't always do it you know basically what we've done where somebody's designing an amp they would have a transformer wound which would be perfect for the voltages and they'd calculate and know all the voltages that they were going to get and things when the amp was built and running but basically what we've done is we've 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 picked up a transformer and thought well we can make use of that because we're building this out of bits and we've found a tube that will run on the filaments rough that will be roughly right for this project and then we've got some preamp tubes so it, it's uh it's what we often refer to as a bit arse over tip but it's uh you know this is this is what makes these projects fun for, for me and i think it does for a lot of people that build them so that's basically what we're going to end up with and uh, this is going to be the high octane flying haggis amplifier so I probably waffled on way too much there, but for, for some of you that, you know, build these things as hobbies or whatever, and I'm sure there's people out there that are way better than me at building apps. Well, I know there is lots of you out there. So basically that that's what we're going to be doing with that. That's the flying haggis.
Right, so the last thing on this video is I bought some tubes. I bought 100 of them and they were extremely cheap and I bought them from the Ukraine. And I bought a lot of tubes from the Ukraine and uh, it does help to put bread on tables and so on. These tubes are 6P 23P and you can see they're a top cap tube there which means the HTB plus is supplied through a top cap I'm sure all of you know that. Now these dissipate at 11 watts so I saw them and I thought hmm they'll be okay for building a few amplifiers in the future these have got a date code of 1979 on them so you can have a look there they're from the reflector factory as most of the tubes that I buy from the Ukraine are and uh, you know I've had some really great tubes off there and there's some really great guys that are selling them let's have a look at some data on this tube so we have here right see if we can enlarge this a little bit you can see it there we go see that a bit better now so if we're looking at it so 6p 23p uh, beam tetrode high frequency beam tet <laughs> high frequency beam tetrode and uh, there's the application so high frequency oscillation and power amplification indirect heating for the cathode and if we look filament voltage is 6.3 there anode voltage max is 300 volts so these look like reasonably durable tubes remember an EL84 is only rated at 300 volts and it's been pushed much further than that anode power or plate plate dissipation is 11 watts as I said on there the grid voltage is only 200 though you do have to be careful with these tubes not to push the grid voltage or they'll run away if you do that and the tube it, the tube socket is RSH8 on there although at a, at a glance to me they look like a, a Novell socket so either it's a different socket or Russian tube data sheets have uh, have a different way of in fact let's use one of these tube uh, things that they use that they put in so if you're changing a lot of tubes you uh, and that's fitted in there okay well that's fitted okay in, into that so it's a tube adapter that is basically so these are just sort of things you, you could for instance we're forever testing tubes in the tube tester so you put one of these in and then instead of wearing out the socket on the tester it wears this out instead and then when you've worn it out you just swap it for another one That's basically how those work so there we go so and you can see those those tubes there so at some point we'll be using these in a project of course we do have to make sure that with these they're extra safe inside because obviously the b plus has come up onto the top of the chassis and uh, so we, we need to make doubly sure that those you know are safe if we are using these you see a lot of guys using these in hi-fis they wire them as triodes and so on i'm not an hi-fi buff i don't know much about making hi-fi amplifiers so we're not going to comment on that that's just what i've seen so that's going to do it for this video so we've had a good look at a few things there this video has probably got a bit long some people will be fed up with me waffling by now and probably gone off and made a cup of tea so look out on the channel because we're going to be doing this project soon if i can just get through some of the repairs that are backing up and uh, you know we've looked at the uh, the old uh, thinnersry there and i'm not brilliant at demonstrating things like this because I only, I only use oscilloscopes for you know for basic use really on guitar amps so don't berate me in the comments 
because uh, I, I only demoed that really because, you know, and re or reviewed it, should I say. I only reviewed it because one or two people on the channel were interested in it that, that watched the channel, and one or two people were thinking of buying one, and one or two people had bought one or two of them as well. And one guy said, he, he, I think it was Rico, said he got one coming uh, the next day, it was in the post. So I'm sure, you know, he's probably interested in watching that, and one or two people that are thinking of buying it. It's a great piece of kit, this, I think is a great piece of kit and you know for 98 quid which is what I paid for that you can't go wrong I mean a decent multi you know a decent multimeter is what 40 50 quid in it so 40 50 dollars so you know an oscilloscope built in with that and a signal generator as well it's a result so that'll do it so thanks for watching and uh, you all take care and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye bye for now.